It's the Daily Dog. Hey y'all, welcome back to the Daily Dog. Thanks for being with me today. You have arrived on a Monday. Today is the beginning of a new week. And of course, y'all, it's going to be a Metal Monday today, but it's going to be a special Metal Monday. About a month ago, I started listening to Images and Words by Dream Theater. I did the first half of the album. Today is the day I am finishing the album, and I am happy that y'all are here. So yeah, I reacted to uh, what amounts to, in my mind, as side one from Images and Words back on April 3rd. And this started as a simple request for me to look at Pull Me Under, the first song on the album. And it ended up becoming a reaction to the first four songs on the album. That included Pull Me Under and Another Day, Take the Time, and Surrounded. And as I look back on my reaction to the first half of that album, uh, Another Day sticks out as a favorite and Surrounded does as well. I really enjoyed those two. So today we're going to finish up the album and uh, that's going to include Metropolis Part 1, uh, The Miracle and the Sleeper, Under a Glass Moon, Wait for Sleep, and Learning to Live. And um, the only one of these that I think I have heard before is Metropolis Part 1, uh, of course, right? So when I did my hour and 42 minute extended play lounge uh, listen uh, as the very first listen on my Patreon, the very first episode of the Extended Play Lounge, I did the entire Metropolis saga from Dream Theater, and that included uh, this this track, uh, part one. So I listened to part one, and then I listened to all of, of part two. And that's available both on the Patreon and here on YouTube, if you'd like it. However, um, I think I did that... Shoot, when was that? Uh, late July, early August of 2021. So it's been uh, a year and a half since I've listened to uh, this track, Metropolis Part 1. And so I'm going to be interested to uh, rehear it and, and get to know it again. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to be reminded of that one. Uh, the rest of these songs, I believe, are going to be first-time listens for me. So let's get to it. Y'all, this, uh, as we have said previously, is the second album from Dream Theater. It was released in the summer of 1992. This continues to be their most commercially successful studio recording of their entire career. And this was the first album that they did with James Labrie on vocals. So we have James Labrie on the vocals, John Petrucci on guitar and backing vocals, Kevin Moore is on the keyboards in, in this iteration of the band, Mike Portnoy is on the drums and backing uh, vocals, um, and John Myung is on the bass. Uh, let's see here, uh, we're going to start with Metropolis Part 1, The Miracle and the Sleeper, and just as a reminder, John Petrucci added the Part 1 to the title of this without any plan for a sequel. <laughs> but the fans kept asking for one, and so the sequel ended up being its own double concept album, right? Scenes from a Memory. But this is how everything gets started. So let's listen to Metropolis, part one. Off we go. Sounds like they're in E minor. I remember this vaguely. It's like it's building to something, right? Pretty extensive. 
extended intro. Fast triplets. Death is the first dance eternal. So I've highlighted a few lyrics in here. There's no more freedom that both of you will be confined to this mind. Being an adult is a lot different than being a kid, right? What a vocal, too, from James. That's beautiful up there. See from memory. Seat is the second without end. So death is the first dance eternal. The seat is the second. I don't remember much of this at all. 
now that we've gotten into it. I remembered how it started. <laughs> what a track friends there are um there are nuggets in here that uh that lead to to future things death is the first dance eternal and then by the end it says love is the dance of eternity right so we get dance of eternity there uh other uh, places in here somewhere like a scene from a memory so that gives us uh, some some fodder for uh, future stuff. Um, I was told there's a miracle for each day that I try. I was told there's a new love that's born for one. Uh, sorry, that's born for each one that has died. Um, so there's uh, the miracle. Um, what a you know I can understand where people are like reading into this and going what what are they talking about? This is awesome. This is uh, there's got to be more to this story. And they said part one. Where's part two? I am intrigued, right? And then they end up needing to come up with part two. And that's how we get uh, Scenes from a Memory, which uh, is an album that I really, really enjoyed uh, listening to. Off we go to the next one, y'all. The next song is called Under a Glass Moon. And I don't know much about this one. So let's see uh, what, uh, what this one has in store for us. Under a Glass Moon. Off we go. <laughs> that would be subtonic. That would be lay. <clears throat> now the one makes sense. Just step by step. So it's a major chord. 
then the subtonic. metaphorical language. subsides to her survival. By your hand I have awakened, bear this honor in my name. Is this John thinking of proposing to his wife? John's playing, but I'm also enthralled by John's playing. Both of them. New area. It sounds like five. Five, six, seven, eight, seven. seven.
Maybe that was one. Soul and silver tears. So much of these. The metaphors are almost so thick you can't really tell what's what's happening. Now they're in that key. Back where they were. And they're done. I wasn't even ready for the end of the song. <laughs> Whew. What a tune that was. I'm not sure how much I like it. Um, I got to really try to figure out. I, I couldn't figure out what they're really talking about here. Uh, the, the, the solo was amazing, obviously. Uh, but what really gets me when they go into these instrumental sections is just how well crafted the songwriting is and how uh the bass isn't in the way and 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 getting on top of john solo the drums are right in the pocket uh the synths and the keyboards are, are right there as well and it everything just fits together so th they take even though they're they're virtuosic players and they can all just shred on their own instruments it's not really um interesting when everybody shreds at the same time. You know what I mean? Uh, you've got to have some context. Oh, this guy is going to take the lead now, so I'll just play back and I'll support their musicianship during this section. I'll get my turn uh, to take the lead uh, another time. It's It shows you just how well integrated they are and that there's a real synergy behind what they were doing. Even on their sophomore effort, it's really, really fantastic. The next song is called Wait for sleep and this is the shortest one on the album i don't know if i've ever seen a dream theater song that's like less than three minutes if it wasn't just a little thing that's part of a concept album so I i'm curious to hear this one wait for sleep off we go piano i read that this one was written by kevin moore who was the keyboardist in the band at the time He's gonna leave it there, isn't he? Now he's 
goes back to Eden. With some added notes in there. Listen to that. Beautiful. Um, so no drums, no guitar, and no bass for the entire track. That surprises me. So, like I said, this one was written by Kevin Moore. Um, we've got James singing it, um, and uh, Kevin was the keyboardist in the band back uh, during this era. <clears throat> and I think this one is about uh, a woman who is uh, going through a quite uh, difficult uh, time in her life. I think the death of a close friend. Uh, they keep talking about ashes. Uh, in with her, um, in with the ashes, uh, where else? And ashes can't answer her pain. God give me the power to take breath from a breeze and call life from a cold metal frame. If I could, if I could ease your pain and bring her back, I would, you know? So he's empathizing with, um, the immense grief, um, of, of losing a close friend. That's real poignant, y'all. I like that one. Really, really lovely. So let's finish it out. Uh, we're going to go to Learning to Live, and this is the longest song on the album. It is the last track, and this one is written by uh, John Myung. I believe the only one on the album, the only song that was written by bassist John Myung, and I believe this one is about the AIDS crisis, which was quite prevalent uh, and deadly during this time, the early 90s. So let's take a look at learning to live from Dream Theater. Off we go. thinking a completely different metrical structure from that opening riff. solo in through there, but it gets the job done. Yeah. 
people had to learn how to live with this disease, right? Brand new. bring new questions and new solutions to be found. I fell in love to be let down. Six, the point seven, or is that the five? Down. Now it sounds like four to five. So it's it depends on whether it's going to go to the major key or the minor key.
string rhythms. And it's so clean. basic progression they've been doing a lot of the time. One down to six. material for the song and I think it fits pretty well for the entire album it gives us kind of an outro that frames the entire album and there we have it friends really impressive really impressive images and words from from dream theater uh, in this last song, <clears throat> man, I, I was, I was young when the AIDS dep epidemic was really in full swing, but I wasn't so young that I didn't understand what was going on. And I, um, I have recollections of just how scary, uh, it was, um, uh, or, or thankfully I should say, um, the AIDS epidemic hasn't touched my immediate family, but I do know, um, uh, friends that uh, continue to learn how to live with uh, with this disease. Um, I'm going to one of the sections of text from this last song. It brings inner peace within my mind as I'm lifted from where I split uh, my, or sorry, where I spilt my life. Uh, I hear an innocent voice. I hear kindness. I hear beauty. I hear truth. Really, really um, poignant, poignant. I, I love this. Uh, Spread before you is my soul, so forever hold the dreams within our hearts through nature's inflexible grace. I'm learning to live. And I think that applies to all of us. We're all just kind of learning how to do this, right? On the fly. <laughs> we don't have any other choice, right? Um, uh, this this marks uh, uh, a few now albums that I've heard from from Dream Theater uh, all the way through, and uh, I really like this one. I really do. Um, I don't know if it's my favorite, but I know that it remains a fan favorite now more than 30 years since its release. Uh, many fans still count this as their absolute favorite among the band's vast discography, and 
uh, like I said at the beginning of this, it's one of the leading albums of progressive uh, metal, especially in that era, the early 90s. And it really established Dream Theater as a leader in this style of music. And I think it's a reputation that the band has not relinquished to this day. They are still kind of the uh, the top of the uh, the ladder when it comes to progressive metal. And uh, they keep uh, doing the work. They are out on tour again this year, a big time tour. I saw them last year and I absolutely enjoyed it, except for how loud it was. <laughs> but I'll be ready this year. I get to see them in concert again when they come through my area in a few months. And so I'm going to really be looking forward to that. And uh, I think I'll give this album a few more listens for sure. Images and words from Dream Theater. This has been Side 2. If you miss Side 1, don't worry. It's available here on the YouTube channel. You can catch that out. And I always look forward to coming back to music from Dream Theater. They always just bring immense musicianship and just pack it in. <laughs> and, and it's just a feast for the ears. Uh, every time I listen. So thanks y'all for being with me for this Metal Monday, an extended Metal Monday. We've been listening to Side 2, for lack of a better word, the last four songs from Dream Theater's Images and Words. Thanks y'all. We'll see you next time on another edition of The Daily Doug.